Sometimes in order to be a hero, you have to take out the person standing in your way, permanently. And sometimes the person standing in your way happens to be another hero. Welcome back Nerd Squad, I am your host Amanda McKnight and this is Top 10 Nerd. Today we'll be counting down our top 10 superheroes who killed other superheroes. Le gasp! So let's get ready and let's get counting. Number 10, Shazam kills Spectre. During Future State, we get to see a lot of bleak futures. One such involved Shazam. Shazam was tasked with keeping Raven imprisoned in the Rock of Eternity because she had taken within her the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse. Unfortunately, through trickery, Raven would end up escaping, but in order to do so, Shazam and Billy Batson would have to be split up. Billy would end up being tormented as he stood guard, but Shazam would return to Earth to act as a hero. Unfortunately, without Billy's soul to guide him, he became pretty conflicted, empty, and a much darker version of his former self. In the end, this drove him to kill Spectre when the Spectre sensed something was wrong with him and probed to find out what was going on with Shazam and why. Shazam surprised Spectre by stabbing him with what appears to be a piece of the Rock of Eternity, and although his death wasn't confirmed, the cosmic hero did look pretty dead near the end of Future State Shazam issue number two. He looked pretty dead to me. Number nine, Gamora kills Eros. Gamora killed her uncle Eros or Star Fox to prevent Thanos from being resurrected. Initially, it was Eros who was actually attempting to kill Gamora because he had thought that she was the one who would be used to bring Thanos back in the ritual. But when she learned it was the other way around, she did not hesitate to take him out. Shocking Star-Lord at the time. Though to be honest, I don't think he really should have been too shocked. Pretty sure if it was actually Gamora who would have been used in that ritual, she would have rather sacrificed herself than allow Thanos to be resurrected. She wouldn't have even argued with Star Fox probably. She'd be like, oh it's me? I'm the person? Alright well then, let's just go. Take me out. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you wanna hear more lists where we talk about, I guess, people killing other people, we can totally do that. Be sure to let us know you're liking this list by commenting down below and giving this video a thumbs up. Number eight, Starfire kills Raven. Starfire only sort of kills Raven, I suppose. But I just wanted to talk about this, so I'm gonna include it. She is one of the many who fights back against her. This is when Raven had turned evil and followed her ruining Starfire and Nightwing's wedding and implanting a ton of Trigon seeds within Starfire via a kiss that the two shared. It turns out that wasn't all that she decided to store inside Starfire though. Raven also entrusted her soul to Starfire, on some level reaching out in a way for help, which is what Starfire learned later when she got her empath abilities. In the end, Cory and the rest of the Teen Titans and friends are forced to take out Raven, evil Raven, by killing her when she is in essence manipulated into resurrecting her father Trigon. While Starfire and the team succeeded in defeating Raven, killing her evil version, her soul self then becomes free. Yay! At the time, Raven's soul self does not have a body, but is still happy to be free for the first time pretty much ever. So it all works out in the end. Number 7, Wolverine kills the Hulk. In the reality of the dystopian future of Old Man Logan, Wolverine ends up facing off with the Hulk and killing him over a rent dispute. Sort of. Here Bruce Banner in his old age has gone completely crazy. It's implied that he even mated with his cousin, Jennifer Walters, aka the She-Hulk, to create their huge Hulk family, known here as the Hulk Gang. What a happy, weird family. The Hulk gang are landlords of sorts, offering protection to property in exchange for a fee, likely mostly offering protection against themselves who are a violent bunch when they want to be. Logan and his own small family owed the Hulk gang money, so Logan headed out to go and earn some. He made it back in time only to find that the Hulks had actually become impatient and ended up coming early for the money, killing his family when they didn't have it yet. Raging in his grief, Logan went to repay the Hulk in kind. Hulk devoured him but Logan got the last laugh, killing the Hulk when he slashed his way out through his stomach. That's some bad indigestion. Number six, Superman kills Shazam. I mean, this one is such an iconic moment, how could I leave it off of the list? Of course, this comes to us from the Injustice reality, coming specifically from Injustice Gods Among Us, the video game. Here, Superman ends up as the major big bad after Joker and Harley trick Supes into killing Lois Lane, and with her, their future family. They also destroy Metropolis, and all of this causes Superman to snap. He kills the Joker and sets out to take control 
control of the world to make sure no criminals are ever capable of causing this kind of mayhem or any kind of mayhem really ever again. However, some of the other heroes who are loyal to Superman begin to question his methods, including Shazam. Questioning Superman, he quickly finds out is considered unacceptable in his new regime. But too late, alas. Superman ends up using his heat vision to burn through Shazam's head, killing him. But first, he freezes his mouth because he's like, shush, no more questions. And then he's like, anybody else have anything to say? People are like, I think I'm good. I don't want to get heat vision through my brain, so I'm good. I'll just. Keep it quiet. Number five, Omni Man kills the Guardians of the Globe. One of the most shocking kills on this list, I think, is this one. Omni Man is introduced to us as a major hero in the world of Invincible. He's basically the Skybound X Invincible universe equivalent of Superman. So, whether we're talking comics or the animated series, I'm pretty sure everyone that knew the character was shocked when they first learned that he took out his colleagues, the Guardians of the Globe. Now, it's true, Omni Man was never a member of the Guardians of the Globe, but he still worked with those heroes and none of us likely had any clue as to why he had done this initially. Even when his reasoning was revealed, also making him seem more villainous than we thought, I personally couldn't even believe it. But that's the great thing about this world, a lot of the characters are more complicated, more flawed, and even the best heroes have their secrets and their motives. That's what makes Invincible so great, the Invincible Universe. Number 4. Wonder Woman Kills Superman In the Black Label series Dead Earth, Superman fails to stop a nuclear strike on Themyscira during a war which takes place between man and the Amazons. Wonder Woman's full powers are unleashed in an attempt to protect Themyscira from the incoming missiles, but there are too many and her home and her people, including her mom, are all completely destroyed. Wonder Woman, coursing with power, becomes so furious and grief stricken that she goes into a blind rage. Both she and Superman fight one another, doing even more harm to the planet. In the end, Superman is the one to lose, being killed by Wonder Woman, who punches a hole right through his chest. The really tragic thing about Dead Earth, though, is that Diana doesn't actually remember this happening at first. She's kind of got amnesia, and she only remembers later on in the series what happened, when you are also told of the story and how it all went down. Which is all pretty sad, because you can tell that she feels pretty bad about, well, I think about a lot of things. Number 3. The Punisher Kills Daredevil during Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe, there wasn't any one single superhero or villain really that survived the Punisher's journey for vengeance. In the end, the only remaining hero left standing is Daredevil. Punisher goes to take him out back in Hell's Kitchen, really only getting the upper hand because Daredevil can't bring himself to kill his friend, hoping that Frank will change his mind. But Frank, being Frank, he doesn't. He breaks Daredevil's arm and stabs him in the chest, ending his life. However, as Daredevil lays dying, bleeding out, he chooses chooses to unmask, revealing to Punisher that he was his friend, Matt Murdock, all along, reminding Punisher that every vigilante and villain is still a person under their mask, and prompting Frank to take out the last one left standing in this story, himself. Number 2. Green Arrow Kills Green Lantern Now admittedly, this wasn't when Green Lantern was going by the name of Green Lantern, this was back when Hal Jordan was corrupted by fear, overtaken by Parallax, one of the creatures of the emotional spectrum representing fear or the color yellow, which is fear. It turns out, for years, Parallax had been feeding on Hal's fear and insecurities, and eventually took him over. Hal, under the influence of Parallax, took out all of the Green Lantern Corps and threatened the existence of the entire world, nay, the entire universe perhaps. With no other options left available, Green Arrow had no choice but to kill his BFF, Hal, in order to put a stop to him and all the destruction he would undoubtedly continue to cause. It all worked out in the end, as Hal came back as the Spectre, but this still ended up being a really challenging time for Oliver Queen moving forward. As if he didn't already have enough going on at that time. Poor Oliver Queen, I feel like his life is always so dramatic. Number 1. Wolverine Kills the X-Men This death, or these deaths I should say, also come to us from the alternate reality of Old Man Logan. Earth 807128. Here Wolverine is the one who kills the X-Men in a tragic turn of events. This is actually what prompts Logan to stop using the Wolverine mantle, instead generally going by Logan or James Howlett in the future. He did not mean to kill the X-Men, who were his teammates and like a family to him, but he was manipulated into doing so by Mysterio, who made him think that all of the X-Men in the mansion were instead villains who were infiltrating the mansion. In reality, they weren't. They were all just his friends and colleagues, likely holding back somewhat from killing Wolverine because he was their friend. And also not killing him in retaliation because, well, he's Wolverine, he's pretty unkillable. So even if you tried, it probably wouldn't go great. What were some of the most shocking superhero versus 
versus superhero fights that you can recall. Which superheroes were you amazed to hear killed the other? Who would you like to see face off when it comes to hero versus hero fights? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it's time to turn to some comments from one of our latest videos, Top 10 Most Powerful Futuristic Marvel Superheroes. Some famous dude comments, the Marvel Future Fight cameo by 3099 Cap was the sprinkles on the icing for me. Haha, <laughs> I love that game so much. The sprinkles on the icing? Wow, that must mean that video was pretty good for you. Cause I feel like if you got sprinkles on your icing, that sounds like a pretty fancy cupcake to me. Trex Advent asks, do you think we will see Iron Lad in the MCU as one of the variations of Kang the Conqueror? Which actor do you think should play him? Oh man, I don't even know who should play Iron Lad. I mean, we did have that, that boy who helped Tony who I think a lot of people think will be Iron Lad, but I don't know. I, d I don't even know, and I don't know if we're gonna see Iron Lad in the MCU, but I kinda hope we do. I hope there's just like multiple Kangs, and they're all, I don't know though, I kinda want them to all be Jonathan Majors somehow. I, I don't know if Jonathan Majors can like play Iron Lad cause he's kind of like a teenager, <laughs> but maybe we could just de-age him? Jonathan Majors is Iron Lad. I guess that's what I'm going for. Procyon Day asks, they also added the All Father Doom skin to Marvel Future Fight recently. I was so excited. I love all this Marvel Future Fight love in the comments. I'm just like, this is so cool. Everyone loves Marvel Future Fight and it makes me really happy. I will also have to check out the All Father Doom skin. I don't think I've seen that one yet. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below for a chance to have your thoughts, feels, and questions responded to in a future video. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I am your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you as always, to stay nerdy, YouTube. I love how I said that, like I was like, oh God, more death. <laughs> but I do actually tell, I enjoy telling these stories. They're fun. Why do I feel like Omni-Man is not the right name? No, it totally is. Totally is. Don't question it. You know what it is. Ooh, dark. I would've put that on the list, but technically Punisher killing Punisher is not another villain. Same villain. Or <laughs> same villain, same anti-hero, whoa. Sorry, Frank, I didn't mean to call you a villain. Only sometimes I feel like are you a villain. You're still a hero, even though you have your dark methods.